Hey guys, welcome back to another video and happy New Year's. Let's hope 2021 is a way better year than 2020. You know, a matter of the fact, let's throw 2020 out of the window. What a terrible year it's been. And you know what? I've been looking forward to this video for, you know, I thought of this video back in November. And, you know, today's January 1st. I'm literally recording this at 2.30 in the morning. You know, I've been pumped for this. So today's video is five WWE superstars, male or female, that need to be pushed for the year 2021. There is a lot, and I mean a lot, of talent on the WWE roster that are not utilized, in my opinion. And I'm going to go over five underrated superstars with a, you know, a ton of potential that they need to push in 2021. Now, will WWE see this video? Hell no, they won't see this video. I know they won't. But, you know, who knows, right? <laughs> the shooter shot, you know. But, anyways, before I start, this is in no particular order. So just because, you know, I have someone at number five doesn't mean, you know, they're fifth on the list to get pushed the most. It's just at random. So that's one thing. The other thing is I'm going to come back to this video six months from now. And I'm going to be keeping track of their win and loss record and how many title reigns they've held. You know, how many titles, like Intercontinental Champion for how many days or, you know, some, you know, something like that, right? So, I will be only counting Raw, SmackDown, and pay-per-views. No pre-shows. I don't watch pre-shows. And no WWE main, ev main event because it's literally for jobbers. All right, so let's start this video. Number five, Drew Gulak. Now, the amount of potential this guy has. I saw him perform in 205 Live. You know, after SmackDown, they do 205 Live. And I saw him perform, and he is very underrated. And then they brought him to SmackDown, and they teamed him up with Daniel Bryan. And he was doing his best work when i mean his best work i literally mean his best work and you know he literally went from main eventing smackdown he was literally doing nothing on raw i'm pretty sure they drafted him to smackdown they teamed him with daniel bryan and you know i think daniel bryan held the title and he was getting a lot of tv time people were noticing him because you know you're teaming with daniel bryan arguably one of the best wwe superstars you know and then he gets drafted to raw I'm like, okay, maybe they're going to, you know, put him in the mid-card pitcher, right? He's not he's not a main eventer. Maybe he's going to put him in the mid-card. A couple weeks go by, he's not even on TV. And then, what happens? He's fighting for the 24-7 championship. That's how you're going to utilize a man that was doing his best work in the WWE, and you're going to put him on Raw? To fight over the 24-7 champion. A jobber title. That's what the WWE 24-7 title is. It's because Raw is three hours long. And they need, you know, time to fill out the show. So what do they do? They add the 24-7 champion, which is a jobber's belt. And they put him in there. What is he doing now? I don't know because I don't watch Raw. That's how boring it is. But... I'm going to have to start watching it now because I'm going to be uh, keeping count of his win and loss record. And for Drew, Drew Gulak specifically, because he likes to fight over the 24 title, I'm not keeping count of that. So if he's in a 24-7 feud and, you know, he gets pinned or wins, I'm not keeping count of that because that belt is so stupid. But let's move on to number four. Number four is John Morrison. Now... I feel bad for this man right here. He was out of WWE for nine years, maybe. And you know how they spoiled his return? On an episode of WWE Backstage. Like, if you compare John Morrison's return to Edge's return, bro, like, you can't even compare them because Edge is just so much better. You ruined him. As soon as he debuted back, not debuted, returned back in WWE, you ruined the man. And now he's not doing anything. You know, yeah, he might be in 
a rival. I don't even know. He's teaming up with The Miz. The Miz recently won back the Money of the Bank, which I guess it makes sense because, you know, John Morrison cashed in The Miz's Money of the Bank. But if you want to, you know, be specific, doesn't Paul Heyman cash in Brock Lesnar's briefcase, you know? Dude, so how does this work here but not work in there? So WWE needs some explaining to do. I know they won't, but I'm just, you know, looking back at Paul Heyman and Brock Lesnar. Whenever, you know, remember when Brock Lesnar had the money in the bank? Who cashed it in for him? It was Paul Heyman. And guess what? Brock won the title and never got back the money in the bank. So why does it work here? You know, I know it's scripted. I know. But just looking back on it, you know. But anyways, they ruined John Morrison. And he doesn't win. I don't know if you guys noticed that. But he has a lot of losses. You know, I think he's only won maybe two or three times since returning back to WWE. And that was about a year ago. So they really need to push John Morrison. Separate The Miz and John Morrison. John Morrison is unreal in the ring. Like, in my opinion, probably the best performer in WWE. All right, trust me, he is, but he, they don't put him in a singles match. And when they do, they bury him for no reason. Let's go on to number three because I'm losing my rage here. All right, number three, Bianca Belair. Now, you're probably wondering, well, you know, isn't she getting pushed? Well, yes, she is. But WWE likes to change their minds a lot. You saw it with Otis. He was getting the biggest push in the summer. In fact, he won the money in the bank. And then what happened? Over time, he got stale. Right? He They treated the money in the bank like a lunchbox. And, now, and then he lost the money in the bank to the Miz. That's the thing with WWE. They changed their stories a lot. So, yes, Bianca Belair could be in a, in a push, but that's WWE, right? So, until I see it happen, I'm going to consider her being pushed in this list. I don't know if that actually made any sense. But Bianca Belair, you know, I don't even need to say anything. She's amazing in the ring, you know, probably one of the most athletic women on the roster, right? So, you know, if, you, if you're not, like, really f familiar with... Bianca Belair just go back and watch some NXT matches because that's really all I have to say about Bianca Belair but other than that you guys know she's really talented WWE you know they need to put a belt on her but I'm a huge fan of Sasha Banks so you, I don't want to see Sasha lose the belt but I want to see Bianca Belair so I don't know but you know she possibly could win the Royal Rumble so you know that'd be amazing if she wins the Royal Rumble and that's where her push starts and then maybe she beats Sasha Banks at WrestleMania that, that's a dream match right there so yeah, let's stick with that. Let's hope she wins. Royal Rumble. But people are saying Rhea Ripley. I see that happening too. But we'll we'll see, you know. So, number two, Liv Morgan. Now, WWE, like, they're missing out on an opportunity right now. All right? When Liv Morgan debuted on SmackDown, who remembers that? It was an open town hall segment. I was there live, just like how I was, you know, there when Drew Gulak fought on 205 Live. I was there for Liv Morgan. And, you know, when Charlotte Flair was talking on the mic, you know, the Open Town Hall segment, that whole point was for people that don't get opportunities to, you know, talk on the mic and whatever. And that's what Liv Morgan did. She went on the mic and she said, it's like people like me, like people that you like don't get opportunities, something along those lines, right? It happened three years ago, but I was there. And then that resulted into a match. Obviously, Charlotte Flair won, but everyone in that crowd, everyone knew Liv Morgan was the breakout star in that match. No doubt about it. And that's when I became a Liv Morgan fan. After that, and now I'm here three years later, she hasn't won a title yet on the main roster. 
I don't know if she won one in NXT. I don't watch NXT. But she hasn't won one. I know that. Not even the Raw Tag Team Champions. It's been three years she's been on the roster. And what did WWE do? They split the Riot Squad to give Liv Morgan a singles push. I was down for it. And now look where she is. She's back where she started in the WWE. That's my... You see what I mean? With WWE changes their plans a lot. They split her, right, to do her own singles career, which I was completely fine with. And now she's back where she started. That's why I said about Bianca Belair, you know. Yes, she might be getting a push, but it's not happening, right? It might be in the works, you know, she might win the Royal Rumble. But until I see it happen, I'm putting her on this list. So, Liv Morgan, looking back on that match. After that match, she goes on the commentary table and she says, I will be back better. And WWE write her off TV for three months. Something like that. If I was WWE, after that match, I would have put her in the title picture. I would have. Because she was the breakout star in that match. That's That was the whole point of the open town hall segment. It's for people like, you know, Liv Morgan that don't get opportunities. And that's why SmackDown Live was the best. It was the land of opportunities. And I wish Raw could go to that style because Raw is kind of the B show now. So, you know, Liv Morgan needs to be pushed. I think I've said enough. You know, she's very underrated wrestler. She improves every single week in the ring. And I wish WWE sees it more. Number one. Buddy Murphy. Yes, I'm calling him Buddy Murphy. I like Buddy Murphy. But same thing with Liv Morgan. When he fought Roman Reigns on SmackDown Live. Remember that match? If you haven't seen that, please, please go watch it. I was live. And the crowd that night was cheering his name. Like, like that was, in my opinion, well, not, you know, not, not my, well, I guess it is my opinion, but that was the best wrestling match I've seen live. Buddy Murphy versus Roman Reigns is the greatest wrestling match I've seen live. All right, I'm going to put that out there. If you haven't seen that match, please, after this video, go to that match. And ever since that night, I've become a huge, huge ass Buddy Murphy fan. It's not even funny. You know, he's not my favorite wrestler. My favorite male wrestler is Seth Rollins. I'm a huge Seth Rollins fan. And what does WWE do? They pair Seth Rollins and Buddy Murphy together. And bro, I love those two together. It was amazing. And then, you know, they're, they're doing their feud against the Mysterio family. In my opinion, not a lot of people like that rival, but I did. I love that rivalry. And if you saw my old videos when I made my predictions on Extreme Rules, which predictions are coming back this year. 2021, I will be posting way more often. Like I did back in the summer. Back in the summer, I posted like three videos a day. I need to get back on that grind. But so, yeah, um, going back to this video, um, it, like, oh, now I lost my train of thought. Oh, my God. I've been talking for like 14 minutes straight. It's probably going to be my longest video. But Buddy Murphy and Seth Rollins were amazing together. And then you split up Buddy Murphy and Seth Rollins, which I was fine with. You know, the whole story was to get Buddy Murphy. Uh, no, the whole point of that arrival was that the Mysterials welcomed Buddy Murphy into their family, which they did. And now look, now look, he's not even featuring on SmackDown anymore. You, you go from teaming with Seth Rollins, main eventing SmackDown, to not even appearing on SmackDown. Like, come on, come on, WWE. Like, you have a, you have a star right here. You built a new star. That's the thing, WWE, they don't build stars. 
but they did with Buddy Murphy. And Buddy Murphy ruined all of his momentum going for him. And when Seth Rollins returns on SmackDown, I hope they realign those two together because right now Buddy Murphy is not even on SmackDown. And he is way too good to not be on SmackDown. So, that's going to do it. So, these are the five superstars. Drew Gulak, John Morrison, Bianca Belair, Liv Morgan, Buddy Murphy. So, like I said, I'll come back to this video six months from now, halfway in the year. And I'm going to keep track of each and every single superstar's win and loss record. I'm going to put it right here. Win, loss, title reign. I'm going to find a different picture so I could fit it. Win, loss, title reign. I'll find a different picture. Win, loss, title reign. And I'm going to come back to this video six months from now and see if they've been pushed. And then after that video, I'll come back on December 31st and pretty much recap their whole year. So I've been looking forward to this video for so long and it's finally happening smackdown is later tonight not really for me because it is 2 50 in the morning so i still have to go to sleep i can't wait for smackdown tonight hopefully is john morrison no john morrison's on raw hopefully bianca belair fights tonight hopefully Liv morgan and hopefully buddy murphy i don't think he will but you know if i had to say my favorite male superstar it is seth rollins on wwe 100 percent seth rollins I'm a huge Seth Rollins fan. Number two would definitely be Buddy Murphy. Number one, my favorite women's wrestler is Liv Morgan. So, that is going to do it for this video. I'll see you guys not in six months. That's the next time we'll come back to this video. But I'll see you guys in my next video, which I don't know what will be. Probably a breaking news video in WWE, maybe. But I hope 2021 is going to be a phenomenal year. And I'll see you guys next time. Peace.